Hi, in this video, we will learn about major types of crops that exist in India. Before we do that, we need to first understand the cropping pattern in India, that is, what is Rabi, Kharif and Zayed crops. And the reason I say this is important, because if you understand how crops are classified into these three patterns, then you will have a better understanding about their origination, properties and characteristics. So let's read about each one of them in brief. The first one is Rabi crop. So this crop is sowed in the season of winter, that is from October to December, and harvested in summer, that is from April to June. So always remember, Rabi crop is a winter crop. The best way to remember is, the letter I also exists in the word winter. So when you have Rabi, it's winter, remember that. Now some of the important Rabi crops are wheat, barley, peas, gram. Now these crops are grown in the large part of India, especially places near north and northwestern parts, such as Punjab, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Uttaranchal and Uttar Pradesh. So remember India has two types of monsoon, that is southwestern monsoon and then northeastern monsoon. So the second one, that is the northeastern monsoon, it occurs during the winter season. Therefore, this monsoon or this rainfall helps in the success of these crops. Now due to the success of Green Revolution, it has helped in the growth of these Rabi crops. So Green Revolution was a period when agriculture in India increased its yields due to improved agronomic technology. You know at that time everything was efficiently done. We have proper technology in place and with best practices, this movement Green Revolution developed and this was purely to overcome food defects because that can lead to health hazards. Now let's read about the Kharif crop. Kharif crops are grown with the onset of monsoon. So this is the southwestern monsoon we are talking about, which starts at the beginning of June. And the crops are harvested in the month of September or October by the end of the monsoon. So Kharif crop is sown in the monsoon and Rabi crop is sown in the winter. Remember that. Now some of the Kharif crops are paddy, maize, jowar, bajra, tur, moong, urad, cotton, jute, groundnut and soya bean. So all of these crops are grown in the region of Assam, West Bengal, coastal regions of Orissa, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Maharashtra. So you see all of these places receives rainfall from the southwestern wind. So this was all about the Kharif crop. So after Rabi and Kharif season, there is something called Zayed season. So it is a short season but it is mostly in the summer. So some of the crops that are grown in this season are watermelon, muskmelon, cucumber and other vegetables and fodders. So all of these crops falls under Zayed crop. So with this, we are now aware of the three types of cropping patterns in India. Now let's read about the major crops of India. A variety of food is grown in different parts of the country and basically it depends on the variation of soil, climate and cultivation practices. Now some of the major crops in India are rice, wheat, millets, pulses, tea, coffee, sugarcane, oil seeds, cotton and jute. So let's read about each one of these crops and get to know more in depth. The first one is rice. It is the staple food crop of a majority of the people in India. So rice is consumed at a large quantity. Now always remember rice is a Kharif crop, which means it is grown during the monsoon season in the month of June. And it requires high temperature that is above 25 degrees Celsius. And then the annual range of rainfall should be above 100 centimeter. So overall you need high temperature and a good rainfall. So rice is grown usually in the plains of North and Northeastern India and also places near the coastal areas and the deltaic regions. Because you see you need a lot of water to grow rice. So coastal areas and deltas they are perfect places to get some water from. And the northeastern side receives heavy rainfall. And the northern parts of Punjab and Uttar Pradesh, they get water from irrigation facilities like drawing water from the reservoirs and dams. Now due to the advancement of canal irrigation and tube wells, places like Punjab, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan, as it is these places receive very less rainfall, but now due to advancement in irrigation facilities, even these states are able to grow rice. And the second crop is wheat. It is the second most important crop in India. It is the main food crop for the people of north and northwestern part of the country. Now this crop requires cool growing season. So that means it should be grown during the winter. And during winter, 
rabi crop is grown so wheat is a rabi crop now it requires a rainfall of 15 to 75 cm so there are two important places where wheat is grown and it is purely because of their ideal location and those places are the ganga satluj plain in the north we are talking about the regions of punjab haryana and the second region is black soil region of the deccan plateau here the regions are maharashtra madhya pradesh and the major wheat producing states are punjab haryana uttar pradesh bihar rajasthan and madhya pradesh so if you see all of these places ranges from north to the central part of the country and the next crop is millets so millets are crops that contain small seeds so some of the important millets are jowar bajra and ragi and these things have very high nutritional value for example ragi is rich in iron calcium and other micronutrients so to grow these crops you need a lot of moisture therefore it is grown mostly in the rain fed areas so again we can call it as a monsoon crop so if it is monsoon it has to be kharif maharashtra is the largest producer of jowar followed by karnataka andhra pradesh and madhya pradesh and when it comes to bajra it grows well on the sandy soil and black soil and it is grown in the region of rajasthan uttar pradesh maharashtra gujarat and haryana and ragi needs red soil black soil or sandy soil to grow so karnataka and tamil nadu are the ra- largest producer of ragi and apart from them states like himachal uttaranchal sikkim jharkhand arunachal pradesh they also grow a lot of ragi and if you see these places also have all these kind of red black and sandy soils available and the next type of crop is maize now it is a kharif crop which requires a lot of water because kharif is a monsoon crop and the temperature should be in between 21 to 27 degree celsius so today maize is being grown by the help of high yielding variety seeds so these seeds require less input and they give a lot of output and then you need fertilizers and irrigation facilities to increase the production of maize so some of the maize producing states are karnataka uttar pradesh bihar andhra pradesh and madhya pradesh now the next type of crop is pulses now india is the largest producer as well as the consumer of pulses in the world and also the government of india gives huge quantity of pulses as a subsidy through the public distribution system to the people of india in meeting the minimum requirement of protein for a person so pulses are the major sources of protein so some of the pulses that we grow in india are tur urad moong masoor peas and gram and by the way they are also called leguminous crops so remember that pulses are called leguminous crops and pulses helps in restoring soil fertility by fixing nitrogen from the air so growing pulses is good f- both for the population as well as the land so pulses are usually grown in rotation with other crops meaning suppose you are growing a crop a so after harvesting the crop a you will grow a pulse crop because it will help in restoring the fertility of the soil and after that again you can grow crop b and after harvesting crop b again you will grow pulse crop so like this it continues and this is the meaning of rotation so the major producing states are madhya pradesh uttar pradesh rajasthan maharashtra and karnataka so all of the things that we read right now all of this are food crops that are grains so now we are going to read about the food crops other than grains so the first one is sugarcane so it is a tropical as well as a subtropical crop so it needs a hot and a humid climate a temperature of 21 to 27 degrees celsius would be an ideal temperature and then an annual rainfall of 75 to 100 cm would be good so where there is low rainfall you need irrigation so the meaning of irrigation is drawing water from nearby canals or dam because that is the best substitute for rainfall there's nothing else so one good thing about sugarcane is that it can be grown on a variety of soils meaning it doesn't need any one ideal soil but then you need manual labor because it is a labor intensive crop so sugarcane acts like a raw material for sugar gourd that is jaggery then khansari and molasses and the states that produce uh, sugarcane are uttar pradesh maharashtra karnataka tamil nadu andhra pradesh bihar punjab and haryana and just remember this uttar pradesh is the leading producer of sugarcane and the second type of food crop that is not a grain is oil seeds they are nothing but vegetable oil so which is obtained from the seed of some plant you must have heard about sunflower oil sesame oil or olive oil that we use in our kitchen 
So these all come from seed oil. So now you know the importance of that. So some of the main oil seeds produced in India are groundnut, mustard, coconut, soya bean, castor seeds, cotton seeds, linseeds, seeds and sunflower. So most of these are edible and used as cooking mediums. Now we also use oil for the production of soap, cosmetics and ointments. So now this adds more value to this kind of crop. So some of the states that produce oil seeds are Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Haryana and Karnataka. So this was all about the oil seeds. So the next type of food crop is an example of plantation agriculture. So we are talking about tea. So the British introduced tea first in India, remember that. But of course today most of the tea plantations are owned by the Indians. Now the tea plants grow well in both tropical as well as subtropical climates. But you need a deep and fertile soil rich in humus and organic matter. So tea needs warm and moist climate. And you also need frequent rainfall. And when I say rainfall, not the heavy rainfall, the shower rainfall, the light one. So these are the ideal condition that is required for the growth of nice tea leaves. Now let me tell you, tea is a labor intensive industry. It requires a lot of hard labor. And the states that produce tea are Assam, hills of Darjeeling, then Jalpaiguri districts of West Bengal, then you have in the southern region Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Now apart from these ideal location, there are few other places like Himachal Pradesh, Uttaranchal, Meghalaya, Andhra Pradesh and Tripura. So these all states contribute towards tea production. Now after tea, it has to be coffee. Wherever you go, you will have an alternative to tea. So the Indian coffee is known in the world for its good quality. And always remember, coffee was never an Indian crop. It was brought initially from a country called Yemen. Now coffee is grown only in the southern region of India. And it is only confined, let me just repeat that word, confined to the area of Nilgiris in Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. So you will just find coffee plants here and no other place in India. And the next crop is horticulture. When it comes to horticulture, just remember fruits and vegetables. So all the colorful, different shaped, solid products that we consume. These are called horticulture. Now India is the largest producer of fruits and vegetables in the world. Now India produces both tropical as well as temperate fruits. So we have mangoes, oranges, bananas, lychee, guava, pineapple, apples, pears, apricots, walnuts. So all these kinds of rich fruits are grown in India. Just have a look at this map. You will find all the places being marked which grows the respective fruits. So India also produces a lot of vegetables. The important ones are pea, cauliflower, onion, cabbage, tomato, brinjal and potato. So with this, we cover the entire horticulture crop. Now let's move on to the next topic, non-food crops. So meaning these are crops, but you cannot consume them. They are not edible. So the first one is rubber. So it is an equatorial crop, meaning it is grown in all the countries that lies in the equatorial region. Now to grow rubber, you need moist and humid climate. And then you need heavy rain, more than 200 cm. So if you see moisture, humidity and heavy rainfall, these are all characteristics of equatorial region. We all know that rubber is an important industrial raw material. So the states in India that grow rubber are Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, then Garo Hills of Meghalaya. So notice all of these places receive heavy rainfall and they are also very humid. So where there is humidity, moisture will be high. So this was all about rubber. The next one is fiber crops. So fiber crops are cotton, jute, hemp and natural silk. So these crops were traditionally being used to make paper, cloth or rope. And they are of two types, natural and artificial. So today fibers are being chemically modified to make them strong. So most of the natural fiber crops are obtained from cocoons of the silkworms and silkworms feed on green leaves known as mulberry. So the process of rearing silk from silkworm is known as sericulture. The sericulture starts with S, so remember that S also stands for silk. Just remember it this way, it will be easy. And the next one is cotton. Now cotton is one of the main raw materials for cotton textile industry. I mean this is a huge industry, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. So to grow cotton, you need black soil. So where do you find black soil in India? It's found in the regions of Deccan Plateau. It requires high temperature and moderate rainfall. And you cannot have frost, you know. 
you only need sunlight bright sunlight and it usually takes 6 to 8 months to mature that is to harvest now the major cotton producing states are maharashtra gujarat madhya pradesh karnataka andhra pradesh tamil nadu punjab haryana and uttar pradesh so if you see most of these states they lie in deccan plateau and the last type of non food crop is jute so jute is referred to as golden fiber and if you see the color of it it is brownish and golden color now you need a fertile soil to grow jute but here is a catch that soil needs to be renewed every year and how does the soil gets renewed by continuous flow of river and where can you find such a place west bengal bihar assam orissa meghalaya so if you see all these places have river that is perennial or continuous flowing so that helps in renewing the soil so jute is used to make gunny bags mats ropes yarn carpets and other artifacts and these are costly they are of high cost and because of that it is losing market because we have an alternative to that it's called synthetic fiber which is also called artificial fiber and they are chemically produced and they are cheap so that brings us to the end of jute and also to the end of all types of major crops that are produced in india i hope you found this video informative i'll see you in the next one if you enjoyed these videos and see a purpose behind watching them please like the video and comment down below until then catch you guys later and talk to you guys on the next one peace